right so today we are starting our series of lectures on neuro anatomy uh, this is a subject some doctors regard it as a terrorist subject because this, there are many doctors who are horrified by the neurosciences but actually if you really fall in love with the neurosciences you will find it these are not as difficult to handle as usually they are considered art of understanding the neuro anatomy is start learning step by step and first concentrate on the basic concepts right in our today's lecture first of all we will start with the development of central nervous system and development of central nervous system will start right from the beginning that uh, how zygote starts developing and how in the end when zygote is converting into a embryo and fetus there is central nervous system developed or peripheral nervous system developed let's start with it from the very early part let's suppose here is uterus now what really happens here it is fallopian tube ovary right in the mid cycle you know when graafian follicle is fully mature there is lh surge right and from the graafian follicle there is release of ovum right and this ovum is taken up by the fallopian tube in the ampulla 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 region and from here this ovum start moving towards a uterus if by chance or somehow sperm happens to be there not one many of them right and if one sperm fuses with this right we say that ovum is fertilized once the ovum is fertilized now let's suppose this is the next stage now this ovum is fertilized it means it has genetic material from ovum as well as from the sperm now if i draw this ovum outside this ovum is basically having zona pellucida a special layer around it now the first stage is that as soon as it is fertilized ovum is fertilized ovum completes its second meiotic division this point is very important attention please when ovum is released from here is that right ovum has cell membrane and it is having zona pellucida and there are corona radiata cells around it right when ovum is coming here at that very time if it has completed its first meiotic division but it is it has not yet completed its second meiotic division right what i really want to say that ovum is at the meta phase of the second meiotic division ovum is stuck at the meta phase of second meiotic division if ovum does not receive sperm if ovum does not receive sperm then what really happens if this is not receiving the sperm ovum is never going to complete its second meiotic metaphase it will die without completing that write down this point that when ovum is released it has already completed its first meiotic division right and it has started its second meiotic division if this particular ovum never fuses with a sperm that is if this particular ovum never gets fertilized if it never gets fertilized it is never going to complete its second meiotic division rather it will undergo death process ovum cannot live without sperm longer but if the real scenario is different let's suppose when ovum came into fallopian tube there were many sperm also approaching that area you know that sperm will try to fuse with the ovum when sperm are trying to fuse with the ovum there is not one sperm there are many many sperm we will not go into detail of fertilization process but as soon as the first ovum first sperm which touches the ovum something 
exchange happens. As soon as sperm touches the ovum, ovum becomes suddenly active and immediately completes its second meiotic tibia. That's the point to understand. The point which I'm highlighting, as soon as sperm will touch the ovum, ovum, will, ovum in rush will complete its second meiotic division, release one more polar body, and now it becomes definitive ovum. Now it becomes definitive ovum. And when genetic material of ovum is already within the ovum, and now sperm genetic material is pushed into that, right? This may become female pronucleus and this become male pronucleus. Let me repeat it. As I told you, the ovum has immediately, as soon as sperm touches ovum, ovum has completed its, yes, second meiotic division and released one more polar body and now it has been converted into definitive ovum. Definitive ovum has a nucleus with 23, nucleus with how many chromosomes? 23 chromosomes, maternal chromosomes. Meanwhile, from the sperm, Genetic material from the paternal side has arrived that will also consist of haploid number that is 23 chromosome. Now this particular ovum which is fertilized has 23 chromosome from maternal side and 23 from paternal side. Now when we talk about this thing that there are 23 from maternal and 23 from paternal these are called female pronucleus and male pronucleus. Then these two nuclei fuse together and that is the moment when they will mix up their genetic material. Now it is not haploid, you can say it is 2N cell, it is diploid cell, 23 chromosome from maternal side, 23 chromosomes from paternal side, total how many chromosomes? 46. Once it has achieved its 46 diploid number, now this particular cell will plan to divide. Now it does not have any intention to die. I told you if ovum does not receive the sperm, it is going to die. But because it has received the sperm, now it is not going to die. Now it will plan to multiply. Right? As time will pass by, let's see what really happens here. Right? That zona pellucida remains there. Zona pellucida is there. And this ovum divides into two cells. Of course, with mitotic division, it is two cell stage, right? Let's follow at this line. This is fertilized ovum, right? Or you can say this is zygote. Now this is zygote, right? Now the first stage is that next stage is that zona pellucida will remain intact, but this material will divide into zygote will divide into how many cells? Two cell stage. Then zygote will go to the next stage. What is that? Yes, please. Four cell stage. Right? When it is passing through this rapid division, right, we call that zygote is converted into blastula. This was zygote. This was zygote. And now this is converted into blastula. We convert it into blastula. When you have blastula, further its cells will divide and then these cells will make a mass of about 8 to 12 or around that collection of cells. Right? Now this collection of cells is still packed within zona Pellucida. It means as the cells are dividing, they are getting larger or smaller entities? Smaller. smaller entities. Is that right? These are called blastomeres. And these individual cells are called blastomeres. And original zygote first passed through two cell stage, four cell stage, blastula stage. And then from the blastula stage, when it reaches at this about 12 cell stage or around that, we call it, yes please, we call it morula. Morula. We call it Morula. So, what was their attention? There was zygote, right? Then zygote converted into blastula. Blastula converted into Morula. Blastula converted into Morula. Then in next stage, what really happens that zona pellucida is still there and 
attention please these cells some cells make a mass in the center some cells make a mass in the center right and the other cells which are arranged on the periphery and these cells start differentiating the group of cells in the center and group of the cells on the periphery they are going to develop in a different fashion now the cells which are present in the center the cell group of cells which are present in the center it is called inner cell mass it is called inner cell mass and the cells which are around it they are called outer cell mass cells which are within they are called inner cell mass and cells which are surrounding outside they are called outer cell mass you know baby will grow out of inner cell mass and outer cell mass will convert for the supporting tissue for the baby outer cell mass will make you can say coverings on the baby and it will make placenta is that clear so this is very early differentiation stage that there is inner cell mass there is outer cell mass inner cell mass will eventually convert into different layers which will make the embryo and fetus and outer cell mass will be eventually uh, converting into supporting coverings like amniotic membranes are there or there are you can say uh, chorionic membranes or uh, more importantly placental tissues is that clear now after the marula next stage occur and in the next stage what really happens right this is inner cell mass inner cell mass and of course that is outer cell mass inner cell mass will eventually convert into definitive embryo now next stage what really happens that blastocyst start zona pellucida sorry zona pellucida start dissolving zona pellucida start dissolving and when zona pellucida is going under dissolving process what really happens when zona pellucida is undergoing dissolution process lot of fluid is accumulating within and when lot of fluid is accumulating within outer cell mass remain like this and within the sphere of outer cell mass inner cell mass is attached at a particular point this is inner cell mass now this is inner cell mass and blue ring is the outer cell mass and blast now and what is this this is accumulation of fluid this is fluid filled cavity this is a fluid filled cavity when this type of shape is achieved we call it yes please blasto cyst we call it blasto cyst and in this blasto cyst inner cell mass is now called embryo blast inner cell mass is now called embryo blast and outer cell mass is now called trophoblast trophoblast blast you see let's go blast means cells which are rapidly proliferating embryo blast means the mass of cells which are rapidly proliferating and going to make embryo embryo blast mean mass of cell which are rapidly proliferating and going to make embryo and trophoblast mean rapidly proliferating cells which have trophic value trophic value mean growth value that if trophoblast is there trophoblast is responsible to provide the material for the growth of the embryo for example trophoblast will eventually convert into what definitive placenta at advanced stage and other membranes around the baby now again out of this uh, embryo blast and trophoblast further development will be seen one thing which will happen that from the trophoblast some finger like processes will come out we call them villi right these are villi this villi especially grow at embryonic pole they especially grow at embryonic pole that pole of the outer cell mass where embry embryonic mass is attached so 
this villa especially grow sprout out from the embryonic pole right and these villa something strange happen now you know these villa are made of the cells but some cells which are on the outer side right cells which are outside these cell lose their membranes and all these cells fuse with each other and when all these cells will fuse with each other these cells will make a continuous layer of cytoplasm in which lot of nuclei are embedded again let me tell you what really happens at this point let's suppose this is one point will lie this is another villus this is another villus still one more villus what is really happening that in the center core look here this villus was made of cells right and outside there were some cells which are on the sides these cells fuse with each other these cells fuse with each other and this fingertip has internal structure in which cell membranes are well defined but outer cells membrane the fuse with each other and in internal structure nuclei are within the cell but in outer structure nuclei are just floating into cytoplasm it means cells which are outside they fuse with each other and when these cells fuse with each other they make a network that is called syncytium that is called syncytium now look this inner cellular tissue is trophoblast as well as the syncytial tissue is also trophoblast because both of them are derived from the outer cell mass right inner is trophoblast as well as outer is also trophoblast because inner is trophoblast and inner trophoblast is basically made of well defined cells as it is made of well defined cells so we should call these points where the cells are very clear cut with their membranes these structures are called cytotrophoblast and outside where some syncytial material is present we call it syncytial trophoblast right let's recap what really happen up to now attention please let's recap what really happen here come here now that originally there was just you can say ovum right and it was having zona pellucida and there were some cells around it uh, and these cells were making some mass like this right so this is corona radiata right this is how new the new you can say ovum which has jumped out of graafian follicle and it has been taken up by fallopian tube right this new cell is approached by sperm as soon as sperm will touch the ovum right ovum will immediately complete its second meiotic division it will complete its second meiotic division and releasing one polar body it will convert into definitive ovum then within the definitive ovum there will be female pronucleus and from the sperm there will be arrival of male pronucleus male and female pronucleus both have one end chromosome so one end from mother one end from the father it will become two end division so haploid gametes will fuse together to establish the diploidy that is 46 chromosome and now this cell with 46 chromosome is called yes this is called zygote once zygote has been formed right it will go into blastula stage in which cells will start rapidly multiplying and with every division initially cell size is getting smaller right and zona pellucida initially is kept intact so this stage is called blastula until this cell mass right blastomeres mass will reach somewhere 8 to 12 or 12 to 16 you can say around that cell mass and this cell mass is called morula and then within morula if we really as morula further grows we will come to know the cells in the center are put together clumped together and cells on the periphery are differentiating in slightly different fashion the central mass of the cells is called inner cell mass and outer cells are called outer, outer cell mass right after that what really happens zona pellucida start dissolving fluid start going in and 
outer cell mass makes the cytotrophoblast and inner cell mass makes embryo blast right and what really happens because there's some fluid filled cavity as well so this type of rapidly growing tissue in which there is cavity fluid filled cavity we call it blastocyst in the blastocyst outer cell mass cells rapidly proliferate some cells keep their membranes intact right and cellular detail intact these cells are called these cells are called cytotrophoblast outside that uh, cytotrophoblast the cells dissolve their membrane their cytoplasm fuses with each other and it is within the sea of the cytoplasm the nuclei are floating and this tissue is called some cytotrophoblast now how many days have passed after fertilization how many days have passed up to now yes please yes any dog how many days have passed about one week right he is right about one week so actually what has happened that on the mid cycle this was released let's suppose if this lady has a cycle of 28 days it means on 14th day of cycle this was released right and if she has received sperm around that time it means around 21st day of the cycle this product of conception has gone through zygote stage blastula stage marula stage and then blastocyst stage by the time it reaches uterus it is in which stage blastocyst stage by the time it means by the time development from here has gone up to the extreme end of this board right it has spent about a week it's all happening during the first week and it may be fifth day or sixth day or so and now it blastocyst had reached the uterine cavity as soon as blastocyst reaches uterine cavity uh, right let's suppose i draw it here it is inner cell mass it is inner cell mass and here was your cytotrophoblast and inside there is embryo blast and what's here these are the villi these are the villi and this villi are covered by yes please syncytio yes please syncytio trophoblast right now these finger tips like cytotrophoblast and syncytio trophoblast they release enzymes destructive enzymes and these destructive enzymes releasing cells or villi when they touch the maternal endometrium wherever they touch the maternal endometrium they will dissolve the maternal endometrium and this is the beginning of implantation it is the beginning of implantation that now blastocyst will get implanted within the endometrium now when blastocyst reaches here when blastocyst reaches here and it is implanting right within the maternal endometrium maternal endometrium at this very time ideally speaking is in which phase endometrium is now mainly acted upon by estrogen or mainly acted upon by progesterone right it is progesterone so it means it is not in proliferative state you know estrogen drives the endometrium to proliferative state right but proliferative stage is up to 14th day after that what really happens in second half of the cycle there is heavy amount of progesterone which is being released by the corpus luteum the remnant of the graafian follicle so progesterone which is coming over from here right progesterone that has converted this into which phase of endometrium highly vascular and secretory endometrium which is very very visible very very you can say good preparation of endometrium for the arrival of blastocyst because by the action of the progesterone endometrium has become highly secretory its glands have grown well their vascularity has grown well it has become soft and it it has become highly vascular and now when blastocyst will start you can say digesting away you most commonly it binds with the implants on the posterior or superior wall of the uterus most commonly superior upper part unusual bindings are also there and as time within one two days 
it will digest away enough endometrium and it will go within the endometrium right and once it is within the endometrium it's about 10th day or so 9th or 10th day and we say implantation has been done and as you know that corpus luteum can supply progesterone once corpus lute look this was griffin follicle it released ovum after that it converted into corpus luteum once it is converted into corpus luteum corpus luteum has a natural life span of about 10 to 12 days so it means for few days it will keep on giving the supply of progesterone after that usually corpus luteum degenerates and supply of progesterone is automatically lost and if you know when supply of progesterone is lost its lab progesterone level goes down rapidly what really happens that endometrium is lost and you can say endometrial lining along with some bleeding is passed out right and this is called menstrual bleeding right now we have to be careful this time this lady is pregnant right and this time as blastocyst is planted within the endometrium right should this lady lose the endometrium out no so it means menstrual cycle should not start it means this lady will miss the periods right how the request that there should be no period are forwarded by the products of baby itself the cytotrophoblast will release a product which is called hcg human chorionic gonadotrophin human chorionic gonadotrophin hcg has many function one of the important function is that it has receptors on the corpus luteum it will attack the corpus luteum and give the good news that dear corpus luteum the ovum which you had released luckily has met with the sperm the product for conception which have been planted and they are giving message to corpus luteum through the hcg to the corpus luteum that please don't degenerate when corpus luteum luteum receives the hcg this is a signal that there should not be any bleeding there should not be the loss of endometrium as this particular endometrium is very precious endometrium because it is carrying the product of conception so what really happens that corpus luteum start growing rapidly right it's so happy and it grows rapidly and it convert into corpus gravidum and this corpus gravidum now releases very large amount of progesterone and of course estrogen also along with that and this is responsible uh, for many many months to keep the endometrium intact and in the secretory phase so that product of conception develop in the uterus properly and normally until babies trophoblastic tissue develops up to such stage the trophoblastic tissue is capable of releasing its own estrogen and progesterone then it start reducing its level of hcg and then maternal maternal corpus gravidum will start degenerating because now baby has got semi independent as far as estrogen progesterone is concerned is that right now what happens next this is the first week in the next week second week we are starting the inner cell mass will convert into two layers right so we have seen it's the end of the first week and embryoblast is well developed right and beginning of the second week and now you know blast cyst has implanted over there blastocyst is already implanted in the functional layer of endometrium which is this layer is already in secretory phase it is under the effect of high progesterone fine now uh, one thing which we were talking about